Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Credit. In this video, we'll be discussing about Google Colab and Kaggle Kernel. These are the uh, free uh, open source platforms where you can do your machine learning or deep learning uh, stuff and uh, without investing in higher spec laptop because they provide you uh, good resources, they even provide you GPU accelerators. So you can actually uh, do good uh, good amount of computation on these platforms and uh, they are absolutely free. Of course, uh, Google Colab comes in in premium package also so if you want to opt for that you can of course opt for that also so uh, I'll be telling you what are the differences uh, in between them and based on that you can decide which one is better for you because if you were just starting into the data science uh, domain or data science field or if you want to learn machine learning or deep learning uh, it is not advisable to uh, buy higher spec laptop because it costs a lot and uh, of course if you want to build something on your own or if you want to start uh, start or make uh, some product uh, based on uh, machine learning or deep learning you can of course go and buy laptop because you'll be having it for future and you'll be doing it for a long time uh, but for learning purpose uh, do not buy those high spec laptops uh, instead you can use uh, these two platforms and uh, if you are new here you can subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified each time when our video goes live and uh, um, you can also like the video if you end up uh, uh, feeling that this video was helpful for you and also if you haven't participated in the giveaway you can participate in that giveaway i'll leave a announcement videos link into the description so that uh, you can watch that video and i'll be guiding you in that video uh, how you can enroll for the giveaway so with that being said let's start this video so the first point is uh, language supported by uh, both of the platforms. So Google supports uh, Python as well as uh, Swift, uh, whereas Kaggle supports uh, Python 3 and R. So if you are someone who wants to do uh, machine learning in R, so you have only one choice uh, that is Kaggle. But if you are a Python user, so you can use any of them. Uh, you are totally free uh, to use any of them based on your personal choice. And uh, if you talk about look and feel about uh, look and feel of those uh, notebooks on Google Colab and Kernel, uh, Google Colab is more similar to uh, Jupyter Notebook, and uh, even Kaggle is somewhat like that only, but it has a little uh, different kind of UI. So it totally depends on person to person which UI they like. Uh, now let's talk about the second point uh, which is version control. So if you are writing some program or if you are uh, working in a team or if you are uh, working on some software, you will probably want to store your uh, code into various versions because you might be adding some feature or you might be removing some feature. So based on that you want to store your code uh, into different versions. So uh, the best and uh, the most uh, used platform is GitHub and uh, google collab gives you native uh, natively supports the uh, connection to the github so you can directly uh, push your notebooks onto your uh, github account uh, from the google collab uh, whereas you cannot uh, do that natively in uh, kaggle kernel kaggle has their own version control uh, software or system or feature whatever you want to say and uh, you can use that it actually works uh, pretty well but if you are particularly want to use uh, github you can use extension it is known as um, kaggle hub so you can uh, install that uh, chrome extension and you can uh, use it for connecting it to the um, github so basically you will have uh, access to github on both the platforms but you will have to perform few additional steps on kaggle now with that being said let's move on to the next point which is data set so uh, if i say data set the first thing which comes to our mind is kaggle because kaggle is one of the greatest uh, and biggest repository of data sets and uh, of course it will give advantage to the kaggle kernel because if you want to do some project uh, or if you want to do some project for learning most probably you will find the data set on kaggle so you don't have to download a data set from kaggle and store it into your system or if you want to use uh, online platforms such as google collab or maybe kernel 
uh, you can directly if you want to use kernel you can directly use the data set into your kernel you don't have to re-upload or download it uh, from the platform so that is a very good thing and also if you are if your session restarts your data won't be uh, deleted from your notebook so data will be there in the input directory so that is a very good thing whereas if we talk about google collab uh, if you are storing your data set into your uh, notebook whenever your uh, session will expire and you will uh, reconnect to the server your data set will be gone and you will have to upload it again uh, if the data set is small like 200 or 300 mb it is fine but if it is uh, more than 1 GB so it is actually very uh, painful because you will have to upload it again and again and if you have a limited data access so again limited access by data access I mean uh, internet connection so if that is the case it will be a uh, problem for you yeah of course you can upload it on your uh, Google Drive and mount it to your Google Colab but uh, you will have to do uh, authentication and again and again so it is an additional step which you will have to do so if you are if you don't have any problem with that you can always uh, use google collab or if you don't want to uh, face that uh, uh, session expiration issue you can always use um, kaggle kernel so based on your choice you can use any of them now let's move on to the next point which is keyboard shortcuts actually in my opinion keyboard shortcuts are very important they make our workflow a very easy and it makes things go very smoothly and also it makes uh, our work actually efficiently so i personally think uh, google collab is somewhat uh, different from jupyter notebook uh, with which most of us are very familiar with and uh, Kaggle kernel has um, almost all the shortcuts same as Jupyter Notebook uh, for example uh, if you want to use multi cursor or if you want to edit multiple lines uh, simultaneously you can uh, simply use control and click wherever uh, whichever line you want to edit in um, uh, Jupyter Notebook and kernel uh, whereas in uh, Google Colab you will have to uh, press alt and then click uh, on the lines which you want to edit so uh, Google Colab has different co keyboard shortcuts so you will have to learn additional uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, which is kind of additional step for me but uh, it, you will have to learn something extra um, but uh, in my opinion Google uh, Colab is also fine you can use all the shortcuts but uh, yes the shortcuts are different and uh, kernel has almost all the shortcuts same as Jupyter Notebook so this is the added advantage for uh, Kaggle kernel now let's move on to the next point which is execution time in my opinion uh, Google Colab has edge over Kaggle kernel because uh, Google Colab uh, provides you execution time of 12 hours and ideal time of 90 minutes by ideal time what I mean is if you leave your um, if you leave your notebook ideal for 90 minutes your session will expire and uh, you will have to reconnect to the server or to the uh, resources so uh, this is the time which is provided by the Google Colab whereas on Kaggle kernel you have execution time of 9 hours and ideal time is 60 minutes so of course uh, Google Colab is providing you more execution time and if you want to uh, do some I think for me uh, 9 hours as of now was fine and I was able to execute my program within the limit but if you are doing some heavy duty then most probably you will need extra hours um, in that scenario I think Google Colab will be the better option among uh, these two uh, now with that being said uh, let's move on to the next point which is memory uh, in Google Colab you have uh, you will get 12.7 uh, GB approx uh, and uh, in uh, Kaggle kernel you will find maximum uh, memory of 16 GB uh, whereas in Google Colab you can increase the memory to uh, 25 GB uh, it, uh, if you take the premium account so of course you have an option of increasing the memory by paying uh, some amount whereas in Kaggle kernel you don't have that uh, uh, feature so the maximum memory which you get is 16 GB and in Google Colab uh, the maximum uh, memory which you get is 12.7 uh, GB and if you take premium you can go up to 25 GB now uh, these were the uh, points which I wanted to discuss with you all and there are few uh, additional points which I would like to mention uh, if you want to use uh, TPU uh, which is uh, provided by the Google it works fairly well with tensor, TensorFlow uh, but it doesn't work as smoothly uh, with uh, PyTorch 
so that is there and also google collab is a bit faster than kaggle kernel so these were the point which i thought i should tell you and uh, in the end and uh, yeah these were the point which i wanted to discuss and based on these points you can decide which one you want to use i in my opinion both are uh, phenomenal softwares because they are providing uh, free resources to us and uh, even with the lower spec laptops we can use these two platforms which is actually very good and learn a good amount of stuff and if you haven't downloaded the notes uh, of data science you can download the data science notes from the link in the description and uh, if you haven't subscribed this channel please subscribe to the channel it keeps me motivated to make uh, this kind of informative videos for you guys and uh, also hit that like button and uh, yeah see you in the next video bye